Thanks, Ed. Thanks very much. And uh, thank you for everyone who is watching, who has signed in uh, to this wonderful uh, Planet IMAX brought to us by the IMAX Group. It's a great, a great gathering of event professionals. So I, I'm here to give a quick fire session on, on resilience and, and sort of ask the question and help you try and answer how resilient are you? Um, a little bit um, about me. My name is James Hitchin. Uh, I am um, a stress prevention and well-being consultant. I'm also the general manager of the Event Marketing Association, and I've been in the event industry for 20 years, um, which uh, I know I probably, well, I might look that old uh, on, on Zoom with a, with a camera, but hey-ho. Uh, I'm also an addiction and eating disorder recovery coach. I'm a counsellor. I'm a mental health and well-being campaigner. And as, as Ed mentioned, I uh, work with an organisation called Stress Matters, uh, which is an industry pledge scheme to help um, companies reduce and ultimately prevent stress within their organizations. So that's me in a nutshell. And, and I talk to you guys as not only someone who's done some training and learning around this, this stuff, but I also come with my own personal experience. Um, and I won't go into detail as we've only got sort of less than 20 minutes, but ultimately in, in 2017, end of 2016, 2017, I, I suffered uh, emotional and mental breakdown and, and hit, I guess, my mental uh, rock bottom. Um, and I was faced sort of with a crossroads. I, I had uh, ultimately two choices. One was continue the way I was going, which would have led me to a very dark place and potentially who knows where that would have ended up or, or make some changes in my life and um, find my resilience uh, and, and sort of navigate my way through the difficult times that I was facing. And um, I chose to, to, I chose the more positive option and hence why I'm here talking to you today. So what is resilience? Um, Tigger here on the slide, if you can see it, I guess is giving us a good example of what it is. Life is not about how fast you run or how high you climb, but how well you bounce. And I would add on to that, how well you bounce back. Um, the de dictionary definition of resilience is the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties or toughness. Um, it's essentially, uh, it's our ability to bounce back um, in difficult times when faced with adversity. Um, and uh, the, the initial, the, the, the name of this session, how resilient are you? Um, some people go, oh, I'm not very resilient. Um, I believe that resilience is, we, we, we all have resilience. Just some of us um, need to unlock it. Um, you know, we are all different in that, in that respect. But I, I believe, you know, we are hardwired as individuals from way back when, you know, with our, what would be classed as our old brain from sort of um, when we were cavemen and women, um, we needed some resilience to live in those times. Um, and, and I believe it's in us all, it's just finding it or relearning how to use it. So briefly, um, I mentioned that uh, resilience is ultimately, it's, it's the ability to bounce back in adversity and, and we can use the word bounce as an acronym to work out how resilient we are. Uh, and so here, it's a really simple tool. Um, I, you'll get my details towards the end of this, but, um, and you can email me if you want a copy of this, but um, essentially we break bounce up in, into a little pie chart. Uh, and B is, um, I have strong bonds with my own network and they act uh, as support to me. So it's all about your support network. Um, o is I'm good at seeing the opportunity to learn and develop when I face challenges. Uh, so it's looking for opportunities and learning and development and not, not always seeing a problem as a problem, but seeing it as a lesson. Um, you is understanding me, understanding who you are and being able to accept who you are. Uh, who you really are. So that's me being able to set, accept me for who I am. Faults and all. Um, N is being able to navigate social situations in times of stress. C is being confident in your ability to cope with adversity. And E is um, coping well with emotions in the face of adversity. And essentially, you can see on the pie chart that um, each each section you would score from naught in the middle up to 10. Um, and looking at that, so saying, you know, do you have strong bonds? How strong are your bonds with your support network? 
Um, and so if you think uh, you've got a, a medium level of support, you've got a couple of people you can phone if you're struggling, you know, maybe put it in as a five. And you go around and score and you look at what the score of each section is and that will give you an overall score and just sort of say where you're at in terms of your resilience, especially across those, those sort of specific levels, uh, the specific areas that I've just covered very briefly. And then it's looking at like, well, if, if for example, um, you're struggling to uh, accept who you are for whatever reason that might be, and that's low, we could then ask the question, well, what could you do to raise it from a two to a three? Um, you know, always looking at sort of small steps, small manageable steps in, in raising things up. And there's lots we can do in our daily lives um, to help us uh, across all things to do with our mental and, and, and sort of physical well-being. You know, I talk with people about mental health, um, physical, spiritual and emotional. And, and across all of those things working in tandem, we can increase our levels of resilience and ability to bounce back. I think given the current global crisis we're in, um, this is a time where we're all showing resilience. It's not easy to be in lockdown, lots of people struggling around work, um, you know, in the UK being furloughed, in other countries, people being laid off and, and, and all of these sorts of things and lots of uncertainty. Uh, and this is a real time and we've seen it within, within our industry, the event, the wonderful events industry that we are all coming together as a community of people to, to overcome these issues, share our knowledge, share best practice, um, which really harks back to, to sort of the network. Um, I'm whistling through this as we've only got 20 minutes. Um, so this is just, this slide just indicates a, a way of looking at your own um, resilience. And actually, I think some of you might be surprised if you were to do this exercise. So when you put it on paper, you can sort of get a visual representation. Sometimes if it's mulling around in your head, much harder to sort of, um get perspective on it so the next the next slide um very briefly is the four a's to overcoming adversity um so it's like got a stressful situation uh something that's really challenging you how do i get over it so the first is accept put the situation in perspective perspective on these things is always so important because when we're in it it can often be really difficult and really challenging and we get tunnel vision and we can lose focus so try and Put the situation into perspective, check it out with someone. Um, and just remember, it is what it is quite often. Sometimes we are, it's out of our control. Like COVID-19, we are powerless over COVID-19. So focus on the things you can do something about. Um, but try and get a perspective on it so that it becomes less personal and less stressful. Avoid. Um, when I say avoid, it's refocus away from a stressful situation and try and focus on something more positive. Um, it's again when we're in it and it's on us and the stress is on us and we're being faced with that very stressful time um, it's easy to sort of get caught up in it and sort of get quite low but you know that's just in that moment and there's there, there is more positives out there alter so shift your circumstances in some way so that the stress is reduced or eliminated um, and then adapt um, change the way you interact with the source of the stress it's always about trying to reframe it um and get a slightly different perspective like i say trying to check it out with others check out your thinking um and really look at the evidence for why it's causing you problems and how you may find a solution and follow that solution um moving on uh because i'm flying through this uh, and i'm very keen for any questions because we should have a few minutes for some questions here's just a couple of resources brilliant brilliant books you can read around resilience um, Bounce Back, it's a fantastic book, has some fantastic strategies in it uh, and just some really great uh, suggestions. And you may well have heard of the wonderful Brené Brown, Rising Strong is, is a fantastic book on, on, on just that, Rising Strong, Bouncing Back, um, you know, allowing yourself to fail and coming back stronger. Um, so it's, like I said, this is a whistle-stop tour of resilience. Um, just in general around mental health, well-being within our industry, um, as Ed mentioned at the top of this piece, that I um, work with Stress Matters. Stress Matters is an organization that, like I said, focuses on helping organizations change their culture to reduce stress. Um, it was built in the, it, it was created with, within the events industry, but now we focus on all sorts of industries. And um, so as Stress Matters is, um, tongue-tied uh stress matters offers a number of uh 
support opportunities. One is a fantastic um, uh, scheme called Buddies Matter. And Buddies Matter is a peer-to-peer -peer support system. So you are um, allocated, you sign up, you're allocated a buddy, and you're just there to support one another, reach out to one another. It's not counseling or anything like that, but it's just there for someone, if you're having a crap day, someone you can email or phone up and go, I'm just having a crap day and get heard uh, and maybe get some advice. And then there's also their new support line, um, industry support line that's open every day, currently from eight till eight, totally uh, confidential. And that's available to anyone who is struggling, especially in this time. Uh, and then in terms of additional support, myself, I am offering anyone who is struggling um, a free coaching session, virtual coaching session, so it's done via Zoom, um, and people can sign up to that via my website, which is iamjames.online. Um, so there's lots of, um, lots of support out there that, that you know, if, if you are struggling, um, there's no shame in asking for some help. Um, I'm going to stop talking as if there are any questions, uh, but that's up to you, Ed, if there are any. And here are my details. I'll keep this slide up. So if anyone wants to take a screenshot or get in touch with me, um, you can. Thank you, James. Love the work that you do. Uh, and love the idea of uh, focusing on things that you can control. I think that's uh, especially relevant to all of us at the moment. Um, we do have time for two or three questions that have come in from the audience. Um, so number one, some people go through tougher situations than others. Does this make that person better at resilience? Um, I, I wouldn't want to label it as better or worse. People, we're all different. Um, and some people are just, some people are hardwired to handle things in a very different way. I mean, my own experience is I thought I was the king of dealing with stress. Turns out I could, that couldn't have been further from the truth. I used totally unhealthy coping mechanisms and I got myself in all sorts of trouble. Um, but that doesn't make me, I don't think, better or worse. It's just different. And some people have the tools already. Um, it took me 37 years to find the tools to, to navigate some of the challenges that life throws up. And so it's, it's about... Um, learning and, and like I said for a lot of us resilience is about it, it's in there but it's just rediscovering it and reconnecting with it and, and learning what one can do um, to, to sort of tap into that. Cool within uh, within an organization whose responsibility is it to ensure the well-being of the people that work within that organization that's the second question in. That, <laughs> that is a great question. Um, I think it's twofold. Um, we have as individuals, we have personal responsibility for ourselves in that, you know, I am responsible for my well-being and my mental health. Having said that, my employer um, has a responsibility to allow me to live well and um, also has a duty of care to me as an employee. So putting me in situations whereby that are not good for my well-being or my mental health, you know, that, that is on them. But it's very much a two-way, it's a two-way um, street, really. It's, it's very much a collaborative piece, um, you know, because people may not care about their well-being and, and, you know, a company can't do anything about that. Um, but if, if you do care about your well-being, I, I truly believe that it's a company's responsibility to allow you to live well. And also, you know, from, from a leadership point of view, if people are overworking and they look like burnout, um, very much, you know, potentially having a conversation and, and being supportive and guiding you in, in, a, in, a, in a sort of a, a healthy way. Um, but again, that leads to leaders needing to be trained so they have some form of understanding. So it's, it's, it's both parties. Cool. And then I guess kind of by extension, this is another question in, but how can we help our customers and our partners be more resilient? Oh, that's a great question. Um, do you know what? I think, I think, I, well, I, I think it depends on context, but, um, uh, and I think everything starts with, um, let's take now let's take the time of covid i think i think right now everything actually starts with um on a really basic level on a human level it starts with being kind um and from there uh it's asking if if people are okay um and also if people are if you're if you've got a 
a client that might be struggling or a customer that might be struggling, maybe trying to just see if asking that really simple question, uh, which I quite often open many sessions with, how are you doing? Um, and listening to the answer. Cause sometimes if people are having a crap day, sometimes they don't want you to fix a problem. They might just want to be heard. Um, and, and, um, and see what they've got to say and maybe try and signpost them to some, some further help. I mean, there's plenty of amazing help out there. I mean, I've mentioned the support line and things like that, but you've got lots of charities. You've got like Mind and, and all of these other mental health charities, NHS, helplines, uh, you've got the Samaritans, all those sorts of things in the UK anyway. Um, but it's, it, it really depends on the context because, you know, some people... Um, some people may not know they uh, they might have never considered how resilient they are or are not, and so it really depends on the context. But I go back to start everything by being kind. One of the three, well, a couple of the rules that I sort of wake up and try and apply is um, uh, wake up, be kind, don't be a dick. And if <laughs> I can get through the day like that, I'm generally doing okay. Good place to start. I, I guess some of that's relevant to the next question that's come in, which says James some of us are living with partners or family who are suffering slightly with mental health issues at the moment. Have you got any, um, any strategies that help us to cope while we're all working from home and, and, and in lockdown or partially in lockdown? Yeah, I mean, everyone is different and it's sometimes it's trying um, a number of different things, but it starts with really open in the family dynamic uh, where you have partners or potentially partners and children and one of you might be struggling, it starts with really, really open communication, open dialogue. If someone is struggling, asking them, giving them permission to speak freely as well, just saying, what do you need? How can I help? Um, but it really starts with having really effective, compassionate um, communication. And then it's looking at trying to um, encourage them if they are struggling to, you know, maybe utilize certain Certain strategies, you know, just to name a few things like mindfulness, meditation, um, exercise, um, you know, looking at caffeine intake, looking at nutrition on, on a basic level, but then maybe seeking further help if they need it. There's loads of additional sort of therapeutic support out there that's all done in the virtual space. Um, so there is support out there, but I think it starts with a really honest, loving conversation. Great. Probably time for one more quick question, um, and that is... There's been lots of talk and focus on well-being for event professionals in recent years. Do you think we're moving in the right direction? Um, short answer, yes. Um, there's been a huge... I mean, I've been talking about this for about three years in the event industry, and it's, it's much more on people's radar. I think there's still a long way to go culturally within organisations, um, but I think more and more event professionals are aware of their own well-being. I think actually um, something that will come out of this COVID-19 situation is people being way more reflective about the way they work and, and the way, you know, we can put a lot of pressure on ourselves as event professionals. Um, so I see, I see potential um, opportunities for people to sort of adapt the, their, the, their working patterns coming out of this. Um, but there's more work to do, but we're on the right track. 